This video is about behavioural economic theory and the policies that can be implemented based on an understanding of this. So one of the most basic assumptions of the traditional study of economics is that individuals are rational, they exercise self-control and act with complete self-interest. So this idea of homo economicus. And now the more modern field of behavioural economics, which was pioneered by economists and psychologists like Daniel Kahneman, Amos Tversky and Richard Thaler, smashed this way of thinking apart. And some of the theories of this field include this idea of bounded rationality. So that's where individuals don't always make purely rational decisions, as we would predict from the traditional field of economics, but they try and be as rational as possible within certain limits. So we spoke in a different video on consumer behaviour about that decision on the cereal aisle where you might just grab a box that looks nice rather than really properly and fully rationally optimising our utility based on all of the potential options available. And that's kind of rational to a degree, but it's not fully rational in the purest economic sense of the word. We might talk also about bounded self-control. So that's where individuals might struggle to exhibit absolutely perfect self-control, as we'd assume with Homo economicus, but they might put frameworks in place to help them achieve a similar level of, of self-control. So Homo economicus would be able to sit with a huge slab of chocolate in front of them and eat only as much as they feel they should, um, to stop themselves from feeling sick in the future and leaving the rest. But in reality, we know that we don't always have that level of control if we're really, really wanting to eat that chocolate. And so we might end up putting most of it away in the cupboard, out of sight, and then that just helps us to exhibit that level of self-control. And another one of the, these ideas is altruism and perceptions of fairness, which can affect decision making as well in a rational ways if the best course of action is at odds with what people perceive as being fair. So many people will refuse to buy something if they think they're being ripped off, even if it is a utility maximising purchase. So I can say I fell victim to this myself um, in Gen Geneva Airport relatively recently. I was really thirsty, bit of a headache, really needed some water before getting on my, my flight. And the only place selling water was selling it for about five pounds per bottle. And so initially I said, well, that's not fair. That's a rip off. And I started to walk away. Um, so even though a comfortable flight, rehydrated, that's clearly worth five pounds across that long period of time. Uh, but uh, I was unwilling to pay this because I didn't think it was fair and I thought that I was being ripped off. Now, there are a range of other of these behavioural biases which can have a really significant effect on decision making. Uh, rules of thumb or heuristics are shortcuts which allow problems to be solved and judgments to be made quite quickly, even if it doesn't always lead us to the most rational course of action. Um, so you don't always have time to weigh up all of the information and you might look out when you're shopping maybe for products that are on offer, maybe those red labels. And it's not always necessarily the best deals that are on those offers, but you don't always have time to check the price per gram or whatever it is. So you just look out for those um, things that are on offer and maybe purchase those more commonly. Anchoring is when there's an initial piece of information, even if it's not completely relevant, and this can have quite a significant effect on subsequent decision making. So sometimes you see suggested tips. You see this quite a lot in the United States. It might say 20%, 25%, 30% or another amount. And that actually makes people more likely to tip around 25% when actually that's a really quite a high tipping amount because 20%, even though quite a high amount itself, has become the low anchor in that situation. So people are more likely to go a little bit higher than that to seem a bit more generous. Now, availability bias 
is when people put a bit too much emphasis on certain events or information just because they've been experienced recently or they're fresh in their mind. So quite often people get quite scared to swim in the sea quite soon after they've just seen a shark attack happen on the news. It's not particularly rational, there's no greater risk of a shark attack just because you've seen it on the news recently, but it's more in your mind, so it's more likely to affect your decision making. And finally, we've got these social norms, which are the seemingly accepted standards of behaviour that people generally conform to, even when rationality would suggest otherwise. So in the UK, we have quite a firmly entrenched round system. When people go to the pub, you buy drinks for everyone who's in that round system, even if they're all different prices. And you wouldn't ever have money changing hands between friends in the group because this is the social norm and this is the way that we do things. So now that we know that people in many situations will act in these ways that isn't rational, then we can design our policies to take account of some of these biases. And in that design, we might consider choice architecture. So that's the different ways or designs of how decisions can be presented to consumers. And there's a few different elements of that that we could think about. So default choice is the choice that's selected when a consumer does nothing. So this is used quite commonly in policies for organ donation. Um, so quite recently in the UK, there's been a change to the default option. So you actually have to opt out if you don't want to be a donor. And it's really very easy to opt in or opt out. So traditional economics would predict that that wouldn't have an effect because people can just easily opt in or opt out. But we know that lots of people just don't bother changing from the, from the status quo. So having to actively opt out has a really significant impact on the amount of people who are going to be organ donors and the amount of lives that can be saved as a result of that. We might also look at this idea of limited choice, which is when the range of options to choose from are restricted to a smaller amount. And it's been shown that that can actually help people to make better decisions. So this has been used with retirement plans and people's pension options. Again, traditional economics would suggest that we should give everyone the full range of different options that they can have, whether that, that might be hundreds of different plans and options, and that would enable them to make the best possible decision. But actually, people generally make better decisions if they're limited to maybe three options, a high risk, a medium risk, a low risk option, rather than having to sift through all that information themselves. And finally, we might think about mandated choice, which is when the consumer is required to make a choice in either direction rather than having that default opt in or opt out. So there's no default in that situ situation and you're forcing the consumer to actively make that decision themselves. Probably the most famous of all of these behavioural economic policies is this idea of nudges. Now, Nobel Prize winning economist Richard Thaler has written a whole book about this that's called Nudge. And many governments around the world now have what they call nudge units to try and influence people's decision making. And what we mean by nudges is when we subtly push consumers towards certain decisions using this knowledge that we have of these behavioural biases in decision making. So there's huge amounts of examples of this from a wide range of different policy making themes and different industries. My personal favourite one is a bit of a silly one where you often see a picture of a fly in the centre of urinals in public toilets. There's no rational justification for it at all, but people tend to aim for it, which then reduces the amount of spill and it means that there's less cleaning required in those toilets. So really, really cheap and easy way of cutting down on cleaning costs. Another one of these behavioural economic policies, we could think about framing. So that's when decisions are influenced by the, the information provided and the phrasing that's used um, within that information and in any questions that are asked. So a really typical um, way of framing things would be to look at the glass half full or glass half empty situation. It's just two different ways of framing what is essentially exactly the same situation. 
And so you might see, for example, minced beef advertised in a shop as 90% fat free rather than 10% fat. It means exactly the same thing, but people are often more drawn to and therefore more likely to purchase if it's framed in the fat free way.